Hello everybody, my name is Peter and this is another vlog for you, another interesting chat and we're gonna talk about dominance and territorial and these type of words that we're using in our training. Now interestingly, every time I'm doing a workshop, I'm asking the people how often or have you ever called your animal dominant or territorial or any type of these labels and there's many, many then raising their hands. Now, that's what I'm gonna talk about because really, to be honest, does it really exist? That's the question. And us as trainers, can we do something with it? That's the question. And you know, when I'm working in the zoo where I'm at right now, when I'm going to other facilities, a lot of people's actually blaming the animal of being the way they are, which is completely fine. But to be honest, as a trainer, it's not gonna help you whatsoever. And that's something which makes it super difficult because we like to communicate to one another as a trainer, hey, that individual is dominant, that individual you have to pay attention to, and so on. But what does that even mean? It's the same thing as when I say, hey, that animal is aggressive. It that doesn't tell you anything. The only thing that tells you is, all right, so that animal apparently shows so many specific behaviors which we interpret as aggressive. And that's the same with the dominance. We see a specific behavior or actually a couple which we interpret as dominant or as territorial. But within our training sessions, we cannot do anything about this. Well, then you might wonder, well, Peter, if that's the case, fair enough. How do you work with this then? Well, I like to call it more of a resource guarding. So I'm always trying to look into ha, huh, that one individual is now attacking the other individual. What can the reason be? There must be somewhere a resource, which might be a food source, which might be a female, which also could be you as a trainer that the animal is fighting over. And if we very detailed look into reasons why that potentially happens, then we can start solving it. Then we can start looking at, hey, wait a second. All right, so, you know, I see that one attacking that one. Anytime a food source comes in place, this is what happens. All right, so now I need to teach the animals to accept one another and teach them, hey, when you accept one another, you're actually now getting more for this instead of fighting each other over this food source. That's essentially what it comes down to. Now, if I'm starting to think that way, I can throw away the word dominance, I can throw away the word territorial and all these other labels because now I actually have an explanation which is going to help me in working through the behavior I'd like to see with the training plan and so on. And that's the important part about this whole part of dominance, territorial and so on. Now I can go into a full discussion about, hey, yeah, but my dog is alpha, my dog is this, my, my horse is that. Interestingly, apparently us trainers use dominance differently as the guys that are studying specific behaviors, the ethologists. You know what? Who is right or wrong, it doesn't matter. At the end of the story, we just want to have animals calmly in our training sessions, accepting one another, working towards goals together. Working together, that's our goal. So who cares if they're dominant, yes or no? That doesn't give us any information. Same thing for, did you know that a group of horses actually doesn't have a hierarchy? There has been done some studies that that's the case, which directly reflects to me, hey, which other animal doesn't have a hierarchy? And on top of that, back to our training brains, then there is a hierarchy or then there's no hierarchy. What does that matter in your training? Nothing. Although if you work with highly social animals, such as dolphins, elephants, gorillas, chimpanzees, and so on, we have to think a little bit about, hey, what are the social connections within the groups? Because if I'm trying to separate a big male gorilla from the group of females, I might have a massive challenge because I take away the control from that male towards this group of females. Super difficult. Does that mean that the male is then dominant over that group? No, not whatsoever. It has all to do with 
a social bond between that whole group to survive as a group they need to have one male with a couple females and that's how they work that's all we need to know and that's the same with any other animal so let's get rid of the word dominance territorial and so on and start thinking about the behavior we'd like to see and let's start about reinforcing them for this then we can move on and any label we apply into our training sessions is actually an interpretation of behavior that we see. We just have to agree on the fact that, all right, that interpretation of behavior is this or that. And then we talk the same language, especially if you work in a team. If you have it like this now, now we're actually progressing in our training program. But this is not only with dominance and territorial, this is also with a happy animal, an angry animal, and so on. We are so easy to throw labels at it. At the end of the story, animal trainers, what we're doing is we see a behavior and we interpret it as happy or angry. Now the question is, do we all agree as a team, yes or no? If not, there's your problem. And that's something we have to work on. That's one of the first things I'm trying to do when I work with a team itself. Same for dominant, same for aggression, and so on. We have to get rid of all those things. We have to look at behavior, what we see, do we like to see it, and what do we reinforce, or what do we respond towards to make behavior increase and work together with our animals. And that is what it's all about. I hope to see you guys next time. Write something in the comments if you like this video. Make sure that you subscribe to our channels and especially to our Patreon. Check it out. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.